Welcome back, first grade. Who's ready to write? I know I am. Um, as I told you yesterday, we are actually starting our book. Very exciting. A um, lot of prep work goes at the beginning of a book, but um, uh, I know we're ready. So I need to show you a screen. And I'm gonna, going to ask you in a moment to get your parents because I want to show them something. Okay. Um, so before you get your parents, um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to need today. Before we start, you need to get these things. Your rivers habitat chart notes. That is what you see here. That um, is the first note taking you have done for this project. Okay, next, you're going to need your paper that you're going to write with. Maybe you're writing in a notebook, maybe you're using lined paper, maybe you're, you made a book like we do in class. Not sure, um, but you'll grab that in a moment. And a pencil and crayons. As soon as you put me on pause, go get those things and get your parent um, or parents, and I will chat, to them, chat with them about the paper. Welcome back. All right, so you have all your things that you need to get started today. Your notes, your paper, your pencil, and your crayons. Now, parents, I wanted to show you something. Um, I put this on the, um, we get a glance in the writing section. Um, it's just options for you to uh, use to make your child's book. Because we're moving away from single paper uh, writing right now, we need to actually create a book. And when I say book, it's not fancy. Um, when I say book, it is simply putting six sheets of paper together. Um, this is a notebook where I have just drawn a box at the top, um, making it so that students will be able to draw across two pages. That's our goal with all of these books. So if you have a notebook, that's what we'll do. Same thing, we're gonna have six sheets front and back. Um, this is what we use in class right here. This is a portrait, just blank six pages, stapled, um, and in the middle, uh, all I've done is taken a straight edge and drawn a line through the middle. So we have a, a line between where the illustrations go and the text goes. Same thing for the landscape style. Um, I've just uh, stapled six pieces of paper together. The kids are used to this. This is what we do in class. Now these um, lined pages I have um, put on the, we get a glance as well. So you can put them together if you choose, no pressure. Now, this actually, the landscape lined is what I'm going to be using for my book. Um, I did it this way, uh, so the lines match up, and so it goes across, like, goes across um, blank across the top, uh, so that we have a, um, a, a line showing where the, the illustrations will go and where the text text will go. That is very important. We're trying to show the children um, that some authors, when they write, write across two pages. So, all right. Now, parents, if you have other things to do, go ahead. I'm going to start the lesson with the kids. Thank you. Or if you want to stay, please do. All right. We know our our whole project, let's go back. We know our whole project is going to be about habitats of Indiana, and we have four habitats. This is the first writing part we've done, but all four will go into this book, not individual pages, but a book. All right, moving on. And we already know this. We studied this yesterday. Why do we write informational books? It's to teach people. Yep, you guys are going to be teaching. What are you teaching? You're teaching about a topic. Our topic is right here. Our topic today is rivers, the river habitat in Indiana specifically. Now, um, I got my information from the same books that you have. Please know your, your notes do not have to match mine. Mine may, even though we use the same book, I may have different notes. Um, but if you want to use some of my notes, that's okay. Or if you like your notes better, great. Just as long as you're able to tell in your book what a river is like, the animals that live there, the plants that live there, the shelter that animals and plants use, and also what the weather is like. Now, here's something interesting. In the book we read, 
um, that book was not about Indiana. It did not really tell us about the weather. So I had to kind of guess. And my in from my experiences, and I looked in other books too, and I couldn't find it. But since there are rivers everywhere in the world, the weather around the river depends on that place. So you'll see what I did for that when I actually wrote the book. Okay. So you should have your notes all ready to go. All right, here we go. And we know our audience is still the same. Our audience is still mom and dad, grandparents, um, teachers, and, um, and then other kids. So you'll want to make the books interesting and make those books something that adults and parents, or adults are parents rather, adults, teachers, and other kids would like to see. All right, always keep audience in mind. Okay. How are we going to make that so appealing? You know it. We're going to use text features. And that comes up right now. Um, here, now I'm leaving these in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so if you need to go back and watch the um, uh, watch this video again, these are the same as yesterday, but they still tell us uh, what headings look like, what bold words are, labels, that kind of thing. Same with captions, color words, and page numbers. All right, all these things we will be using. Okay, now, as I said yesterday, which would you rather read? A page full of notes, no pictures, no text features, boring, blah, 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 or something that looks more like this with text features making it more appealing to the eye and making the pictures making it more interesting? I think I know which one I would rather read. And I think you would too. All right, we always make a plan. My plan is right here, um, same, pretty much the same plan as yesterday. The uh, topic is rivers. The topic is uh, what I've written in this section is going to be on the lines in the text. Very important. Now, something um, that I decided to do is um, you'll see how I change something. Uh, from this in my actual um, actual book, but uh, I and I did not use every single one of these animals that would have taken up a lot of space. I did not use every single one of these plants. Well, there's only two, but I only used one. Um, but and what you do when you are a writer, you decide when you put your illustration together, when you put your um, text together, what is most important. So. Um, so you'll see how I take all this and put it into my book. And here it is. Here is my Rivers book. And um, so I actually want to switch from this one to, to the one that, just so we can see it better. Here we go. All right, here we go. Come on, camera, let's do it. Okay, here we go. So we'll be able to zoom in a little more on this. I want to, us to, while we're zooming in on this, be aware of what my notes said, because um, right now you're gonna be taking your notes and putting them into text and illustrations and that kind of thing. Let's start with just looking at my illustrations. Remember these three boxes right here were the ones that I wanted my illustrations to be based on. So um, let's see if I can, I can't zoom in anymore. Hmm. Okay, well that might work. All right, so let's start over here on this side of the illustration. Um, sorry guys. Okay, as you can see, um, some of the things that I listed in my in the notes were crayfish, catfish, dragonflies, beavers, kingfishers, freshwater mussels, pond skaters. I didn't include all of them, but if we look right here, I included some pond skaters. I read about those in the book. And then I thought, oh, you know what? It's hard to tell really what those guys are doing. So I thought it'd be a good idea to make a caption. Ponds, and I, I put the um, word pond skaters and bold because I thought it needed to stand out. Um, then it tells what they're doing and why right there. 
I also included the crayfish and I used a label. I did not need a, I did not want to do a bunch of captions, so I just did a label here. Next to it um, are the water lilies. That was one of the plants. I could have done bladder warts, but they would have taken up a lot of my space, okay? And I want you to notice something. When in my notes up here, I said, a river is a large stream of water that flows across the land. Now, if you can see my, on, the, on my illustration, there is still land under the water. That river flows over the land, across the land, okay? And then, um, let's see, moving on. I had some other fish over here. And we're not focused very well. Let's see. That's a little better. Okay. Oh, back to water lilies. I did put a um, label because I thought that needed to be pointed out. Here's some other fish that I really did not put a much time into. I just wanted to have other fish in here. But this is my, my heading for this. It's very important. Just like um, we had a heading up here on the notes page. We have to have a heading on our um, on our actual top uh, writing page. And remember how I said that um, the the rivers uh, rivers around the world the weather depends on where they are. Well, here I put rivers in the summer, and and I will read for you in just a moment what my text says. That way you can see how that how that uh, goes together. Then let's go over here. Some of the other things I wanted, other um, animals, catfish. I wanted to draw catfish. Now something about the catfish are these whiskers. In the reading, in the text, I learned that, in the text that I read in the book from Mayan, I learned that those whiskers are called barbels. And um, so I told about the barbels, and then I put that in bold so that it stands out. I also listed a freshwater mussel. It looks like a clam. That's what we think of, but we call them, in, when they're in rivers, because it's freshwater, we call it a mussel. Anyway, there's a, a nice uh, caption to talk about the mussel. And by the way, when um, one of the things down in the um, shelters part of the habitat, I mentioned that uh, freshwater mussels use their shell as their shelter to protect themselves from predators. So I'm just trying to put all this into the scene and put as much information as possible. And of course, this thing over here that looks like a mess, like I messed up on something, it's actually a beaver dam. You can't see the beaver because the beaver is inside. I do want to read my text to you so that you get a feeling for how this flows. Ha <laughs> ha, no pun intended. All right, so we have our text up there, our illustrations up there, and let me move myself. This says, and the text you notice, just like the illustration goes all the way across, the text goes all the way across too. The text flows all the way across. <laughs> all right, that's enough bad jokes. A river is a large stream of water that flows over land, and that, my friends, was in my notes the plants and animals that live that live there need special body features to survive oh this is very important survive is very important that's what habitats are all about these um, animals and plants are spending all their time trying to survive i thought that was a key word so i highlighted it that is another good text feature to use for important words um, and all of these things all of these fish, all of these plants, they all have special features to survive. And then I'll continue. Since Indiana's weather um, depends on the seasons, the weather near rivers, oh, and I had a mistake. I had an error, so I should fix that. And it should say the weather near the river, oh no, I guess that's okay. The weather near the river changes too. Okay, if I did have a mistake, I could definitely go back and change it. Now, last thing I wanna show you, because I know this is running very long. This is something I'm going to want you to do um, at your house after every time we do a, um, 
a new page in our book. Now notice, this is a checklist and it, it's divided up into river, forest, pond, and cave, okay? We are only doing the river now, so um, I'm gonna fold it so we don't see all that other stuff. And these are just questions you're gonna ask yourself. Did I read about each habitat and complete each habitat chart box? Well, we are only doing river now, so if you did river, you'd circle yes. If not, circle no, and so on. So you'll do that with your family. And it goes over, um, it goes over all the text and graphic features. You know, did we include a heading, an illustration, a caption, um, at least three um, labels, that kind of thing. So very important. And then see this red part down here? There's a key at the very top that says green, check as you write. That means after you finish each one, check it as you go. If it's red, that means you're not going to check that stuff until the very end. And that is um, the conventions like capitalization, punctuation, and spelling of your snap words. Okay, I tried to keep it short. I know I didn't. I am so sorry. Um, I'm going to really try to make tomorrow's lesson much shorter. Good luck. If you have any problems, please uh, have your parents call or um, email or dojo or however we do it. So have a good night and we'll see you later.